Welcome to the Prophecy Club. We're going to continue talking with Zen Garcia today. He is a webmaster, video producer, radio host, author of 10 books, ministry 12 years. Today we're going to be talking about his new book, Sons of God, who we are and why we are here. Now here's some of the topics in the book I think you'll find very interesting. Adam of Light and the Three World Ages, Dragon Lords, Prior Times, Mission Earth, The Celestial Battle and End of the First World Age, The Pre-Adamic Earth, Adam of Paradise and the Second World Age, Forbidden Fruit, Prison Planet, The Watcher Rebellion, Fiery Serpents, The Molding of the Eighth Day, Dust of Adam and Eve, Fallen Archons, and The Tree of Good and Elevation of Consciousness. Today, he's going to be talking to us about the pre-flood age in Atlantis. So, Zen Garcia, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Thank you again, Stan. It's always a pleasure to join you in fellowship and to be here to present this information to your listening audience. I, I really hope it, that it blesses their lives and helps them to discern how the biblical prophetic word ties in and connects with the ancient mysteries and mythologies worldwide. With the stories of Atlantis, because many people in looking into the ancient mysteries and the ancient mythologies are very familiar with the stories of Atlantis, but they do not know how it connects to the Genesis timeline and the narrative, which, um, because most people believe um, that there was not a pre-flood or an antediluvian age, and that all we have of the timeline of creation was the last 6,000 years from the, uh, the creation of Adam and Eve, modern Adam and Eve. And, but if you understand that indeed there was a war in heaven and that they, there was a previous age which led to the destruction of the earth and how the earth became uh, without form and void as a deserted wasteland and an indistinguishable ruin, then it makes sense that, yes, indeed, there was a previous age of which even Second Peter uh, speaks about as having been drowned um, previous. And I do believe that there are passages like Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23 through 28, I believe it is, and also Ezekiel 26, which speak about there haven't been a previous destruction, a judgment against um, a very advanced culture and civilization before even that of man being here and present um, in the world. And so we'll talk about some of those things this, uh, this evening and within this show in order to set this as understanding so that people can then make greater sense of how these things tie together with the biblical narrative as presented uh, by me over this course in this particular series. And so if you don't have questions, Stan, I'll just go ahead and read a, a particular passage which speaks about the destruction of Atlantis, and then we'll tie it together with— Yes, um, go for it. And by the way, just so you listeners know, <laughs> I do a different interview style. When guests come on, I say, this is your time to the people, and I let them talk. And if I have something to say, I'll interrupt. Other than that, it's their time with you. So go ahead, Zen Garcia. Well, I really appreciate that, Stan, because uh, it takes a lot of time to set up the premise for this. Well, let me and just so, ask you on that. With other radio interviews, do you not find yourself saying sometimes, well, did you invite me to talk? Or are you going to do all the talking? <laughs> well, yes. And then also because um, a lot of people, because it does take time to establish the premise of, what it is you want to bring forth, and there's a certain outline you have to go through in order to get to the end, but yet um, other show hosts, they want to interject questions or they want to uh, uh, field questions from the chat room, and that can disrupt the flow of thought exactly. and also the presentation. Exactly. So, uh, again, yes. my heart is, if I have something to say, I'll interrupt or I'll put it in a whole other program. Uh, but I, this is your time with the people, so you go ahead and talk. Well, I appreciate that. This is from a book called The Scroll of Thothis. And the I'll bring these short, um, well, it's a little bit lengthy, but uh, it will establish the premise for what we're talking about. And this is about the destruction of Atlantis. And this is a text that most people have never heard about and never had chance to read. It says this, In the Book of Beginnings, it is said, 
the generations passed and a vast amount of knowledge and wisdom was accumulated and preserved in purity. It was the heritage of mankind, but though man had learned to cherish the light of truth and walk wisely with it, nevertheless, then as now, false priesthoods flourished. They pandered to the carnal desires of the underdeveloped and exploited the weaknesses of the ignorant. Their iniquity built up a vast weight of evil in the netherworld, which projected itself into the material of earth, so that the powers which upheld it became unstable. This caused all the southern part of the old land to sink down into heaving waters. This disaster was brought about by the ascendance of evil, rites which awakened the dead, were rife among the carnal-minded and ignorant, while those who remained steadfast on the harder road of spiritual development had fixed their eyes on the light ahead, ignoring the pitfalls at their feet. It was then even as now. Will man ever learn? This was the aspect of the disaster, as written in the Book of Beginnings. There were openings in the land from which evil vaporous poured forth as a mist, descending upon the people like a mantle. It spread out and covered the whole face of the land. The tongues of the people were stopped, and they became dumb with fear. The ground trembled beneath them, and great tongues of flame shot up. The whole land heaved and rocked like an ocean wave as it rose and fell, groaned and shook, the fires which strove beneath burst forth to be met with shafts of lightning striking down from heaven. A thick black cloud of smoke filled the land, and men were smothered in dust. As the setting sun rested on the horizon, it could be but dimly seen beneath the cloud as a fiery red ball. When it had gone, a great dense darkness prevailed lit only by great sheets of lightning. The waters broke heavily over the land, sweeping it clean. The plains and cities were covered, and new shores formed around the mountains. That passage reminds me of Jeremiah 4. The waters mounted up until all that moved and lived was covered. The land was submerged. Mountain tops alone remained above the rush of uplifted torrent. Whirlwinds blew and brought cold winds, which cleared away the dust and debris. Mud banks were formed, and mountains, a mountain mouth remained open to spew forth vile vapors. During one long, awful night, the doomed land was torn apart and southward sank out of sight forever. Now, the next uh, passage is from a different text. This is from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. And this will also bring forth in introspection that the Atlanteans were involved in dark magic and that the evil of the priesthood is what caused God, the Most High, to bring judgment upon them. And this, interestingly enough, this passage also affirms how it is that they took over the councils of the men and working through the royals, those that sit on the thrones of the world today, which are the, the sons of Cain, that they, in taking over these councils, are now working to rule and to push forth the agenda of New World Order. It says this, Speak I of ancient Atlantis, Speak of the days of the kingdom of shadows. Speak of the coming of the children of shadows. Out of the great deep were they called by the wisdom of earth men, called for the purpose of gaining great power. Far in the past, before Atlantis existed, men there were who delved into darkness, using dark magic calling up beings from the great deep below us. Forth came they into this cycle. Formless were they of another vibration, existing unseen by the children of earth men. 
Only through blood could they have formed being, and only through man could they live in the world. In ages past were they conquered by the masters, driven below to the place from whence they came. But some there were who remained, hidden in spaces and plains unknown to man. Live they in Atlantis as shadows, but at times they appeared among men. A. When the blood was offered, forth came they to dwell among men. In the form of man, they amongst us, but only to sight were they as our men. Serpent-headed when the glamour was lifted, but appearing to man as men among men crept they into the councils and taking forms that were like unto men, slaying by their arts the chiefs of the kingdoms and taking their form they rule over man. Only by magic can they be discovered. Only by sound can their faces be seen. Sought they from the kingdom of shadows to destroy man and to rule in his place. But know ye, the masters, mighty in magic, able to lift the veil from the face of the serpent, and able to send him back to his place, came they to man, teaching him the secret. But swift then they lifted the veil from the serpent, cast him forth from his place among men. Yet beware, the serpent still liveth, in a place that is open at times to the world. Unseen they walk among thee, in places where the rites have been said. Again, as time passes onward, shall they take the... So this is really sort of saying that sort of thing is going to happen again in the tribulation, yes. and all of this is, I mean... What is it? The Bible says that that thing which was is going to be again. I can't remember the exact yes. quote right now. But yeah. in other words, there's no, nothing new under the sun. So right. all of these evil are going to come forth once again. It's going to be part of the strong delusion, the tribulation, all to get people to worship the Antichrist and take the mark and decide whose God is going to be God. Amen? Amen. That's exactly correct. And Which is why in Daniel... Um, chapter 4, I believe, it says that they will intermingle themselves among the seed of men, but yet they will not cleave as iron and clay does not cleave to one another. Yeah, it's, it's Daniel 2.43. Kind of but yeah, they, they mingle their seed. And I believe what is going on there, I think that the devil has long thought, uh, been angry with the fact that he can't offer people eternal life. And I think that along with the mark of the beast, they're also going to offer an injection which they're going to claim is going to give people eternal life. It's going to correct their DNA. Well, something goes horribly wrong, and that's the reason uh, sores break out upon people that have the mark of the beast. Yes, and they're also involved, like we have the eyewitness account of Thomas Costello um, from the Dulce base and describing Nightmare Hall and how they have been for a very long time working on creating a hybrid extension, a supernatural human for them to be able to use as fit extension to work through and to be present within the world. And so, yes, all of those things are connected to what Daniel put forth in prophecy so very long ago. Are you familiar with, I believe his name was Snyder, I want to say Rod Snyder or Tom Snyder? Phil, Phil Snyder. Yeah, Phil, there you go. Are you familiar with his story? Yes, um, and he also is another confirming witness because um, also in this text, the Emerald Tablets, it speaks about how thought the Atlanteans speaks about how they had to build uh, these deep underground bases. And also in the oral tradition of Credo Mutwa, he talked about how before they left, they had to build underground bases and build places to um for a time, and I believe it was because the judgment of God had been brought upon them that drove them underground. But Phil Schneider spoke about how when he was commissioned by the government to build these deep underground bases, that they were building upon 
already existent ancient structures, just like in the story of um, the the Nazis and Hitler going to South Antarctica, that they, the British SAS that went there to blow up this particular base, they described this ancient tunnel system, and they described how the Nazis had established the base into an already existing ancient structure. And we see when many times all these megalithic sites that are being discovered all over the world, that there are tunnel systems and complexes beneath them which tie together these various points. Um, and it's my opinion that all of these sites and these megalithic structures and the underground tunnel systems were built by these rebel angels and the, the fallen ones previous to and the fall of Adam and Eve and the modern 6,000 years of the last era of history. Obviously, you can tell he knows a lot. Now, I'm going to throw a twister at you. What do you think? Because obviously, you know a lot from the beginning. So obviously, you know a lot about the last days. So what do you see? Kind of where are we? What do you see happening sort of between now and January 20th? Do you see anything big coming on the world? Is there something you see in the next three to six, nine months, inside the next 12 months for sure? What do you see coming? Well, I think um, that disclosure is what is being set up and established. And just like with the ancient alien, um, that being the number one show throughout the world, that it is laying the foundation that not only that the rebel angels are our benefactors and our creators, but that they are the saviors and that they are coming to save us from ourselves. And, you know, we know that Satan, he counterfeits everything. He knows through the prophecy, uh, through the biblical word, that Yeshua is the true Savior Messiah and that he is coming to save his people from the wrath of God that is going to be poured out on the wicked. And so he wants to counterfeit that and he wants to present these ancient aliens, the Antichrist, Apollyon, Abaddon, as this particular savior, um, which there was an interesting um, TV series just recently called Childhood N, which spoke about a group called the Overseers coming to the earth to basically to save us from ourselves, but not to destroy us in invasion, but to help humanity to cure evil, to help the paralytic walk, to end wars, as it says that you know the Antichrist himself will be able to do these supernatural things, call down fire from the heaven, and to unite the world in peace when we, uh, as humanity, have not been able to do so. Uh, and that's been largely in part because of the controlled opposition of the New World Order and the inner workings, the shadow workings and leanings of the New World Order through the Freemasons, as um, as uh, Credo Mutwa spoke about them actually worship, worshiping these beings, uh, that they in fact do worship Satan. And it's my opinion that that is because they are directly connected to him in bloodline and lineage. And as I read a long time ago in a quote, I confirmed that through their own words, how they do not believe that their father was Adam, but that he um, it was in fact the serpent, the Nakash, the feathered serpent uh, of Genesis chapter. Okay, three. then let's go back to my question. So what do you see in the next year or something? Or do you even see anything of significance happening? Well, in specific, I, I don't know as far as a particular specific event, but I do believe that with the... Coming up of uh, Pope Francis, I believe that he is the last Pope Petrus Romanus, and that it yep. says that in this particular time that the Antichrist will be established and revealed, and that behind the scenes right now, all of that is being established, being set up, and that we know that the focal point for that will be Jerusalem, and that according to Albert Pike's vision— that there will be this controlled opposition, this third war that is established in order for the Zionists and the Christians to fight against the right. Muslims and the fanatics, and that afterwards, after they 
wear themselves out and destroy themselves, then that the communist atheist countries will be established to step into the power vacuum. Uh, and that, of course, the world be, will be united under the United Nations because they are the seat of world government and that the Antichrist will be brought forth and given over, granted authority over this international organization. See, I, I see exactly what you're talking about. And though I'm praying hard that Trump gets in prophetically, also on the timeline, as I look through my understanding of what the Bible and the prophets have said, I just can't see him getting in. It's like he would be too much of a delay to their timeline. However, I hope that delay happens. Any comments on that? Well, I pray the same. And um, I personally, and I shared this with you yesterday, that um, I believe that both sides are controlled and own and that they are you know, dedicated to the power elite, the Bilderberger groups. But I do hope and I do pray, as you brought forth, that Trump is real and that if he is real, that yes, if he can get in there and delay this and if he's going to be a man of integrity and that, as you shared with me, that his fa um, family and bloodline, that historically they have, like Josiah, uh, called the nation to repentance and brought forth healing and brought forth repentance and had everybody, you know, destroyed the groves, destroyed the high places, destroyed the worship and, and the idolatry. And I most certainly am all for that because any, I pray for, you know, continued and ongoing peace. I know all of us have children which we were concerned about and that we don't want to see any of them have to go through struggle and wrath, especially in what is seen in the uh, the biblical prophetic word. And so, of course, I, like you, pray for peace and ongoing continuance and peace. Uh, but we also know that the word says uh, peace come. And just to show you how the mythology of Atlantis ties into the Bible and to certain passages, I invite people to examine closely Jeremiah 4, verses 23 through 27, and also Ezekiel 26. But I'll share really quick uh, Jeremiah with you. It says this, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus had the Lord said, The whole sh land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. And so this particular passage is one of the only three that tie together in um, exact wordage with the earth becoming without form and void. And so I think that was done deliberately, that the Most High was connecting this to the Genesis 1 verse 2 of the earth having become without form and void, which again is, when you look it up in the Strongs, a deserted wasteland and an ind indistinguishable ruin, that this passage is connected to the pre-antediluvian, pre-flood destruction of Atlantis and also the other cultures and civilizations which were brought up and tied to the rebel angels before the creation of modern humanity. As it says, I beheld and lo, there was no man. And yet we have and see that the cities and the wilderness were broken down at the presence of the Lord. Well, folks out there, as you can tell, he is a deep well of information, and I think you would do well to get this book, Sons of God, Who We Are, and Why We're Here. I think he'll help you understand Bible prophecy, help you understand where we are in the world today. Excellent, excellent thing to have, this kind of understanding, this kind of deep knowledge. It's called Sons of God, Who We Are, and Why We're Here, available at prophecyclub.com, and is available for a gift of $25 or more. You can call us. 785-266-1112 if you'd like to. 785-266-1112, prophecyclub.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your gifts and support. 
Scott. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. We've decided to extend the summer blowout. You can get 50 DVDs for $250, that's $5 each. 25 for 160, that's 640 each. 15 for 120, that's eight bucks each. 10 for 100, obviously $10 each. Six for 70, four for 50, and two for $30. You can go to prophecyclub.com. There's a list of all the DVDs there, or you can call us and ask for the summer catalog. Flip through it, then decide which DVDs you want. That's 785 266 1112, and it expires soon. Call 785-266-1112 today. Some restrictions apply.